Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. Let's have a look at uh, Zelensky, perhaps understanding for the first time who exactly he's reliant on to keep those black rock checks coming. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. He's going to beat President Putin. We're actually going to beat Putin, and actually I'd like to correct myself, because it's not checks from BlackRock, it's checks to BlackRock. The checks are from you! <laughs> it's your checks, it's your money. You'll be working, that's you drilling something, you're typing, you're doing something on your laptop, that's you, you're plumbing. 50% of the money you earned doing that is going to perpetuate that war, so hope you're enjoying it, because you're, you're funding it, you and your government, including Joe Biden, President, and who's that that's the Vice President again? I can never remember. It's Trump, isn't it? I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President, but I think she's not qualified to be President. So let's start there. Oh dear, it's not getting any better. I'm not focusing, I hope you realise this, on the obvious decline of Joe Biden. That's sort of, in a way, no longer interesting. I'm I'm fascinated by the way that the media are repurposing it and catching up with it. And I wonder whether this 2025 idea is just a way to sort of ossify the polarised positions. Like, in the same way that Joy Reid would scream, I don't care who it is, or, like, you, there are numerous pundits now that are saying, we don't care if Joe Biden's demented. You can you can run a kangaroo in a wheelbarrow for president and we'll vote for that, even though it's the national animal of Australia. Then None of this makes sense anymore, and that's, in fact, what's beneath it. The creaking and quaking that we are observing is the inability of the establishment to maintain a central narrative because there are too many evident counter narratives. There are too many obvious errors, mistakes and lies required to maintain their own narrative and it can't be mangled or held together anymore. We're watching this unfold in real time. At least it's creating some, you know, enjoyable memes. Um, guys, he, he says he still needs to make his speech. Uh, what, what do you think? Can he do the speech? Can, can, can he, he do the speech? The demented fucking piss mad king of England? He, he could say anything. He could tell everyone his Barbara Streisand. No, I think we have to, we have to drop it, right? Okay. But at the very least, he should be on stage. It would be great to get the body up there. Okay, we push it as late as we can. And maybe if we just get him on stage, that'll be enough? Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe send him up through a trap door surrounded by dry eyes. Oh. Right. Them kind of right wing leaders that we're supposed to despise and formerly, I suppose, with the cultural affiliations that I once had, I would have been more sympathetic to these type of ideas, appear to be among those that are most in tune with the sort of reality of this situation. I'm talking in this instance about Giorgia Maloney, Prime Minister of Italy, who reacts understandably and somewhat naturally to her encounters with Biden at the NATO summit, where we're supposed to be, should be, discussing how to avert war, but are in fact discussing how to increase the likelihood of war and how to fund war and how to report on war in a way that's disingenuous and duplicitous. The same way that we now understand that we've been lied to about Biden's capabilities because, you know, we saw with our own eyes, we can now apply our learnings to the way that the war is reported on. Wait a minute, the same people that told us that Biden was uh, competent, sharp as attack, etc., are telling us that Russia's attack was entirely unprovoked, that Putin is an imperialist that will uh, engage in an expansionist war. We have to fund Ukraine. Like, that, it's the same people, and it's the same lies, or at least it's the same pattern. <clears throat> Oh dear, maybe some of the hair sniffing stuff's got more to it than we first thought as well. I mean, when you look at some of those collages, it don't look good. Luckily though, you know, we've got a brilliant leader in the UK, Keir Starmer, a popular leader with a popular mandate. He'll be making some crazy changes, some innovation, I reckon. And even if Biden does buckle and fail, Kamala Harris is ready. And maybe, just maybe... We can be unburdened by, maybe what will be can be unburdened by what, no. Maybe we can unburden you with what was will be, won't we? Should we unburden you with, no, I can't do it as well as she can. Look, it makes sense when she says it. They taught us that we could do anything and should never be burdened 
by the limitations of other people to be able or not be able to see what can be. <laughs> she really sees it as a vision, doesn't she? Like it's over there. Don't be unburdened by other people's like this this over here. You're not in minority report. <laughs> whoosh, unburdened. Whoosh. It doesn't make sense in just normal talking. Just in normal talking. That's a, a baffling Cohen that might edge you towards awakening as you attempt to understand it and then you realise, no, no, it's not me and my inability to decipher. It's a communicative failure from the transmitter that we're experiencing. Here, fresh from a tidal... Congratulations. <laughs> Joe Biden shouldn't do comedy faces because when he goes like that, I just thought, oh no. He shat himself, hasn't he? That's what you immediately assume. Now, you know who's responsible for Joe Biden's dementia? I don't know. Vaccines? Maybe. Certainly Peter McCulloch thinks that. Or it could be Russia. Denigrate politicians in the United States and elsewhere. Um, have, have you, do you have any concerns right now that this is the leading edge of any part of a Russian effort to interfere in the election? Has the president been briefed on this? And have you seen any evidence that the Russians or other foreign powers have tried to seize on the uh, debate performance to repeat some of the president's most embarrassing moments? So that's a very good question. Uh, I would have to talk to our team about those particular questions that you just asked. There were multiple questions uh, in your statement there. Uh, I would leave it to the Department of Justice as uh, what they announced. Obviously, that's for them to speak to. Look, AI has always been a concern. Uh, that's why the president uh, made some announcements recently in executive uh, to take executive action on how we can... Certainly did make some announcements. AI might be the solution. I'd take an AI president at this point. Why not? Why not have a robot one? Why not have one that never even existed? Why not just have a conceptual leader at this point? <laughs> We can't continue to bring you this beautiful content without the support of our partners. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? you got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you in your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very very own 1775 coffee this is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had seriously good ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of bolivia not in the bolivian lowlands run not by a family but by a single man still living with a pet no instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with try it. rumbles 1775 revolutionary coffee support freedom of speech build a parallel economy it actually values you and loves you my favorite it's dark of course i've always found the lure of the dark irresistible i'm sorry how can i stay mad at you but you're just gonna have to wait over there for a little while level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom loving creators like me on rumble visit 1775coffee.com now pick up your first bag use the code brand to save 10 percent on your first order oh come on why choose you know okay back to the content Extraordinarily, though, faith among secularists is on the rise. Some people that would say it's ludicrous to believe that God came to earth in human form, that the creator of the simulation entered the simulation to tell us that all will be well, that there are frequencies of transcendence available to us, that only love is real, that you can have a personal relationship with the creator. They would describe that as nonsense, as superstition. And yet the idea that you can continue to believe in Biden is popular over on MSNBC. Um, Chris, and, I, and I won't I won't go on at length. I, I will just say, though, you noted that there were some moments of, you know, startlingly impressive command of the issues. Uh, this is just my opinion. I, I, he is not only strong on foreign policy, he is just just fundamentally right on foreign policy in the way that he talks about it. And again, your mileage may vary. That is how I feel about the way he talks about our relationship with our allies and our relationship with NATO. Is it fundamentally right that Donald Trump is the vice president? Is it fundamentally right that Vladimir Putin is the president of Ukraine? 
No, it isn't, is it? You can hear his command of the issues, particularly in his asides, like mentioning as an offhand way that it was Turkey, really, that needed really to be talked into. And asides! Hey, by the way, baby, it was Turkey that really reneged on that particular treaty. Hey, that guy's actually all right. Yep. It's, we can vote for him now. There's nothing to worry about. Everything is in order. Go back to your bed. What kind of somnambulance are they trying to summons when they invite us to believe that we haven't seen what we have all just plainly witnessed? Are they trying, in a sense, to provide a conceptual prophylactic to prevent us from realising that not only have they duped us with the Biden is OK story, but the idea that, in fact, the Democrat Party represents civil liberties and civil rights and cares about ordinary people and is the party of ordinary Americans and that there isn't a global experiment afoot to centralise authority and power wherever possible. Do you remember when John Stewart did his first show back on The Daily Show, he kind of took aim a little bit at Joe Biden. And then after that, he didn't talk about Joe Biden anymore. And I thought, oh, well, yeah, John Stewart's back. So now we might have someone with the political and comedic chops to handle what is obviously an increasingly polarised space where late night talk show hosts won't attack Joe Biden, although of course they are doing that now. People that were lining up to sell vaccines and now criticising the establishment. Now, even late night talk show hosts have turned on Biden and John Stewart has turned on Biden. And I wonder, once a culture shifts like this, what how much longer can they cling on to power? Certainly, how long can they cling on to it with any certainty? You know, <laughs> perhaps this chart <laughs> could, if I may. Sorry, the pen caps are made of Kevlar. <laughs> Very difficult to. Perhaps this chart will illustrate. Uh, and illuminate the point more clearly. For instance, uh, uh, in 2022, uh, when we saw Biden give a shout out to Representative Jackie. Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jackie was dead. It's interesting, isn't it? So what does this reforming mean? I suppose the culture and the various institutions within it, by their nature, have to continue to try to preserve their own power. It's amazing, though, to see John Stewart actually looking at the chronology of the descent of Joe Biden. But when will it be that the issues that remain contentious are discussed in those places, like the escalation of hostility between the United States and NATO countries and Russia, like the evident deception that took place in the pandemic period, not errors, deception. When will the establishment turn its attention to the issues that remain significant? Because those issues continue to be discussed here. This is the basic assumption that I might make from the changing perspectives on Joe Biden in the cultural media. They knew then that Joe Biden was senile and decrepit, but participated in the maintenance of the idea of his competence. Do they similarly understand that escalating hostility between NATO and Russia is unwise? And if it is wise, who is it beneficial to? Who benefits from this increasing fear? Can the, I wonder when they will come to address the undue power of organisations like the WHO or what took place in the years between 2019 and 2022. And I wonder if when it comes to something like 2025, when we will see a conversation in legacy media spaces that acknowledges and accepts that there are diverse and opposing cultural ideas that can no longer live in this kind of ongoing, fraught, febrile, frustrating friction and have to be accepted as different cultural ideas different political entities and that we can no longer support institutions that want to corral together hundreds of millions of people for the benefit of whom precisely while moving closer and closer to 
apocalyptic wars, uh, restrictive health policies, citizen management of an overbearing and ghouling degree. Surely now it's time to accept that this is not a superficial subject, that it's not a superficial issue that centers around one individual or one policy or one think tank. What we're witnessing is tectonic plates moving so significantly that what has to ha happen as a consequence of it are new visions, new ideologies that have at the very center decentralization and devolution but that's just what i think let me know what you think in the comments and the chat hey thanks for watching if you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish join our live stream click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement download the rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content stay free